Kiddos, welcome to your first homework of the new year, where we are looking at comparing and ordering fractions, breaking it down to what the different skills look like. So let's get started. First thing we're doing is we are rewriting with common denominators, because in order for us to compare or order fractions, we need to give them some common denominators. So when we're looking at them, we're looking at pieces that are the same size. So remember, when we're doing that, we're going to look for common denominators by using least common multiples, right? That was our key to success. So thinking least common multiples, if I skip count, what does it take? So if I skip count by two, two, four, six, eight, I skip count by four, four, eight, 12. The first thing that I'm gonna hear that they have in common is a four. Now, the cool thing about this is, this is already a four, so I don't need to change it. I know that two times two is four, one times two is two. So when I compare them now, they both have a denominator of four. And now I can visually see or draw a picture of what this looks like. Next one, three and six. Again, skip counting by three, three, six, nine, 12. Skip counting by six, six, 12, 18. I hear that they have a six in common, which means that this one can stay and this one can be changed. Three times two is six. One times two is two. Now they both have a denominator of six. Looking at eight and four, we have a common multiple of eight. So I'm going to change this one and leave this one alone. It already has an eight as a denominator. One times two is two. Four times two is eight. I'm now comparing five eighths and two eighths. Now this next one is the first one where we don't have a shared number that we can use. So if we're looking at 5, 5, 10, 15, that's where I'm going to start. And then I have to ask myself, okay, if I'm skip counting by threes, will I hit 15? I know that I will. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. So 2 times 3 is 6. 5 times 3 is 15. 2 times 5 is 10. 3 times 5 is 15. Now they both have a denominator of 15. Coming down here, we have 9 and 6. I'm going to write this one out for you so you have a little bit of a visual. So let's make it a little bit bigger. If we're skip counting by nines, we have 9, 18, 27. If we're skip counting by 6, we have 6, 12, 18. That shows me right there that they have a common multiple of 18. So 9 times 2 gives me 18. And 6 times 3 gives me 18. Remember, if I'm not sure, all I have to do is count it out. This is times one, times two, times three. This is times one, times two, times three. So when I rewrite this with my new denominator, five times two is 10. We know that our denominator is going to be 18. One times three is three with a denominator of 18. So now we're comparing 10 over 18 and three over 18. Over here, we have one half and three fifths again. We're going to have to dig deep to find one here. So if we're skip counting by twos, we have two, four, six, eight, ten. I'm going to stop there because I know when I'm skip counting by fives, my ones place is always going to be a five or a zero. Over here, we have five, ten. I found what I'm looking for. One times five and two times five. Three times two and five times two. When I rewrite these, one times five is five, denominator ten. 3 times 2 is 6, denominator 10. That's the end of page 1. Any questions, kiddos, please bring them with you to class. All right, my loves. Over to our next page. Our next page, we are comparing and ordering fractions by putting in the correct symbol. Now, this time, we're using our comparison to 1 half because we don't have the same denominators with these. So what we're gonna do is compare them to one half to see which one is bigger, okay? So I know that if the numerator, fancy way of saying top number, right? If the numerator is larger than the denominator divided by two, it's greater. So if I look at my bottom number and divide it by two or cut it in half, if our top number is bigger, then I'm bigger than one half because I know that half means to cut something into two equal pieces. If my numerator top number is less than the denominator cut in half, then it's less than one half. So let's take a look at what that means because that's a lot of words, right? If I take four and I cut it in half, that gives me two and two. 
right? If I cut four in half, it gives me two. So I asked myself, is three bigger than two? Yes. So that means that three fourths is bigger than one half. Okay, because if I cut this in one half, I, one half would be two fourths. Okay, over here, I have five. If I cut five in half, it's not going to be even, right? It's going to be bigger than two, but less than three. But when I look up here, one is definitely smaller than both of those. So one half is going to be bigger. Five, six. If I cut six in half, I get three. Is five bigger than three? Yes. So five, six is bigger than half. If I cut 10 in half, I get five. Is five bigger than four? Yes. So one half is bigger, right? If this was five over 10, they would be equal. If I cut 12 in half, I get six. Five is smaller, which means that it is less than. If I cut four, 12, or if I cut eight in half, I get four. Four is smaller, which means that this would be bigger. Questions? Bring them with you to class, okay? Now, if this was tricky for you and you wanted to do common denominators, you absolutely could. I could use the skill from our last page and say, okay, if I skip count by four and I skip count by two, what would that look like? That would give you two over four and you'd be able to compare that way, okay? But we're looking at a skill of comparing to one half. But remember, our brain doesn't always work the same as everyone else's. So if it makes more sense for you to write them as one half and make a common denominator, absolutely go for that. Okay. All right, loves, we're continuing. This time you get the option. You can find common denominators or you can compare them to one half. Totally up to you. Okay. So if I cut four and a half and five and a half, I could use that strategy. I can compare both of them to one half. I could say, okay, how does three fourths compare to one half? How does three fifths compare to one half and go from there? Or I can make, excuse me, common denominators. Okay. So let's take a look at them both ways. All right. So if I did four and five and I did my skip counting, four, eight, 12, I'm going to do five, 10, 15, 20. So I want to see if I can get to 20, which I know we can. 16, 20. So I'm going to do four times five and five times four. I'm going to do it that way, okay? Five times four is 20. Three times five is 15. Five times four is 20. Three times, five, three times four is 12, which means that 15 twentieths or three fourths is bigger. If I wanted to do this as comparing it to one half, I can absolutely do that for this one. It's easier to do common denominators, okay? Down here, eight and four, I can make common denominators this way. And I'm comparing five eighths and four eighths. Five eighths is bigger. Down here, I know that three times two is six. So I'm gonna go with that and say that this would be two six compared to four six. Four six is bigger. You're starting to see my preference, I'm sure. Two times two is four, five times two is 10, four tenths and six tenths, six tenths is bigger. If I multiply these both by two, I get 10 over 12, five twelfths and 10 twelfths, 10 twelfths is bigger. And then for this one, this is a big one, this is a challenge. 25 times two is 50, 50 times two is 100, 62 over 100 is bigger. All right, loves, any questions? bring them with you to class. I know this one was hard. This one was really hard. All right. We are looking at fractions to put them in order, but in order to do that, we need a common denominator. So this one took a lot of steps. This one was big work. So if I'm looking at four and two and eight, and I can skip count by four, I can skip count by two, I can skip count by eight. But what I want to do is I want to make them all to eight because when my brain looks at this, it thinks eight. So I'm going to do four times two gives me eight. Two times four gives me eight. So I now have six eighths, four eighths, and five eighths. So if I put them in order from least to greatest, Four eighths is the smallest, then five eighths, and finally six eighths. So if we number these, this would be number one, this would be number two, and this would be number three. All right, over here, we have three, six, and nine. 
This one was tricky because three can turn into nine, but six can't. The closest that we can get is 18. We actually have to change all of these. So nine times two is 18. Six times three is 18. Three times six is 18. So when I do that, I now have 12 over 18. I have nine over 18 and I have four over 18. So least to greatest, nine or four eighteenths is the smallest and then nine and then 12. So if I were to number these, one, two, three. Okay, so two ninths and then three sixths and then two thirds. Next one, we have 10, five and two. I'm gonna make them all into a 10. That means that our first one stays alone. We don't need to change it. And then when we do these, we have six tenths and we have, oh, this should be times five, my brain. And then five tenths, change our color. There we go. So we have four tenths, six tenths, and five tenths. Our smallest is four tenths, then five tenths, and then six tenths. So if I'm numbering them, one, two, three. Over here, 12, four, and three. I'm gonna make them all into a 12. So I'm gonna do times three on this one and times four on this one. And when I do that, I now have three twelfths and eight twelfths. So three twelfths is gonna be my smallest, then five twelfths, then eight twelfths if I number them, one, two, and three. Here we have six, three, and four. Six, three, and four. Now we have some options with this one, right? Because two fourths is the same as one half. And if I do that, if I think to myself, well, two fourths is the same as one half, right? Because four divided in half is two. I could do it that way and I could say, okay, the bigger the number, the smaller the piece. So one half would be the biggest and one six would be the smallest. But I'm going to guess that most of us made them common denominators. And with this one, I'm thinking 12 because six times two is 12, three times four is 12, and four times three is 12. So when I rewrite these, I now have two twelfths, four twelfths, and six twelfths. So they're actually in order, small, medium, large. Small, medium, large. Now for this one though, I was tricky, did you catch it? They were in order, but I switched what I was looking for. Can you believe it? I switched what I was looking for on the bottom. I'm a trickster. So for this one, we would say that six twelfths is the greatest, four twelfths is the middle, and two twelfths is the smallest. So for this one, one, two, three. I know I'm a trickster. Now, hopefully you noticed the last one was the same thing. This one, I'm going to make them all 15. That's going to be my goal here. I'm going to have 5 over 15, I'm going to have 12 over 15, and then 14 over 15 obviously stays the same. My biggest out of this group is going to be 14, then 12, then 5, so 1, 2, 3, again in order, but we had to reverse them back. Questions on this one? I know this was hard. I'm really starting to stretch you because Every day in class now is a day that we're closer to fifth grade, which is bonkers. But that also means that the expectation for what you're able to do is going to change a little bit because you're getting smarter, mathletes. You are more capable. And we need to make sure that we are practicing, practicing, practicing. All right, sweet faces, down to this one. We are looking at some word problems. Word problems really stretch our thinking really stretch our thinking. So Theo ate two thirds of his sandwich and Ruby ate four fifths of her sandwich who ate more of their sandwich. So we need to make some common denominators to start, right? So if I'm looking at three and five, so I have my two thirds and my four fifths, I'm gonna make them into fifteenths. Because when I see three and five, my brain automatically says 15 is the way to go. So if I multiply this one by five and this one by three, 
2 times 5 is 10, 4 times 3 is 12. Now that they're the same, I need to go back and see, well, what do they want me to do? So they said that this is Theo. Theo ate two-thirds of his sandwich, and Ruby ate four-fifths of her sandwich. Who ate more? Well, 12 fifteenths is more, so that means that Ruby ate more. A recipe calls for two-thirds cups of oil and three-fourths cup of water. Which ingredient is there less of in the recipe? So we have two-thirds, and this is oil. And we have three fourths and this is water. And we want to know which one is less. But in order to do that, we need to first make them have the same denominator so we can compare them. So I would multiply both of these by four and both of these by three. When I do that, I get a denominator of 12. Two times four is eight. Denominator of 12, three times three is nine. Which ingredient is less? Oil is less because eight twelfths is less. Over here, we have Yasmin. Yasmin read three-eighths of her book on Monday, one-fourth of her book on Tuesday, and one-eighth of her book on Wednesday. Order the days from least to greatest for how she read. So we're ordering them from least to greatest, and we have three-eighths, one-eighth, and one-fourth. Now I see two-eighths, so I'm going to make this an eight-two. And when I do that, I get four-eighths. So the least is going to be one-eighth then three eighths, then four eighths. Over to Hugh. Hugh has three pieces of wood for a project measuring one quarter of a foot, five sixths of a foot, and five twelfths of a foot. Order the pieces from least to greatest, least to greatest. So I have one fourth, I have five six and I have five over 12. So I'm looking at these and I'm thinking let's do 12 because four times three is 12 and six times two is 12. When I do that, I now have three twelfths, I have 10 twelfths and I have five twelfths. So three twelfths is gonna be the smallest, then five twelfths, then 10 twelfths. Any questions, bring them to class. We have two more kiddos. Four tenths of the class voted for pizza. And three fifths of the class voted for an ice cream party. What type of party received the most votes? Well, let's see, we have four tenths. And that was for pizza. And we have three fifths for ice cream. So we need to make these the same. When I see 10 and five, I think 10 can also skip count. When I do that, I get six over 10. So six tenths is bigger than four tenths, which means ice cream party it is. Last one, Tyler spent three fifths of his paycheck on groceries, one tenth of it on gas for his car, and two tenths of it in his savings account. Order Tyler spending from greatest, be careful, we switched it, greatest to least. So he did three fifths for groceries, one tenth for gas, and two tenths for savings. I'm seeing five, 10, 10. That tells me let's do 10. When I multiply that, I get six over 10. So he spent the most money on groceries, then savings, and then gas. Any questions, kiddos? Bring them with you to class.